Hello, I'm Matthew from Wide Vision Metal Fab, and this video is going to be about how I make my portable pipe squisher. Um, this here is my prototype that I made years ago, but this video is going to be about how I make this press now. I've made a few changes to the design, and it looks a lot better. Matter of fact, here's what my new version looks like. And there you go. That's your pipe squisher. I have a few videos on the making of this press scattered across my YouTube channel, but they're kind of hard to find because it's not just one video. Because of that, I figured it was time to show off my new design and have it all in one video. Now, if you don't know what a portable pipe squisher is, well, it's for building Corel mostly. For most of my career as a welder, I have built Corel. I have built miles and miles of Corel for various customers. And I can tell you that making saddle cuts is very time consuming. It is much easier if I can just cut the pipe, squish it, put it in place, and weld it. When I first started building Corel, I was actually using an acetylene torch to heat up the ends smash it down with a sledgehammer and try to get it in place and I quickly realized that was ridiculous. So I built myself a press using a 12 ton bottle jack back at the time. It was much faster but it was still really annoying to hand pump that thing. So then I made another press that used a 20 ton pneumatic jack which was much easier, much faster, but I wasn't getting a very long service life out of those pneumatic 20 ton bottle jacks. I knew that I needed to go with live hydraulics. My first version of a live hydraulic pipe squisher was hinged and had a big long cylinder sticking up the side. I'm sure I made thousands of squishes with that press. It worked very well. It even had an automatic return function on it. But I wanted something a little bit better and I also wanted something that had interchangeable dies down here on the end so I could push off bearings and that's when I ended up building this version of the press. Well, now that I have my CNC plasma table, a milling machine, and a bunch of other tools here, I have changed how I make this press. So this video, we're going to walk through how I do all this. I am drilling the holes. I've got a piece of inch and a half by three inch metal in here. And to do that, I simply use an inch and an eighth by three inch depth of cut annular cutter. Got it set up here in the mill. Hopefully I'm in the right location. So now I'm just going to start making a whole lot of chips. See the power feed will work. slug and let's see oh. there we are to uh, chamfer these holes in here I use the angry mosquito around we go Nice chamfers on everything. Makes life easy. It works. Yay, they're in line. How do I hold this? There we go. They're in line. How awesome is that, huh? I shouldn't have taken this last die out of the mill because I actually have to put two holes in it that are threaded for half inch bolts for my retractor pusher doodad here. 
Hey, does that fit? Yeah, it fits. All right. <sighs> Drill that out to 27 64 whatever that is, so I can tap it for half inch. Why? Oh, the chuck is slipping up here now. Really? That's interesting. You see that? My chuck just came off the harbor up here. Ah, son of a gun. Well, it's one of those days, I guess. Here, here we go. I'm gonna make the return nut as I call it. Basically its only function is when the cylinder pulls back in it brings the dies with it. I put my easy scriber in there and I'm gonna draw where the holes are supposed to go. I do that so when I take it over to the mill it's a lot easier to reference and I can just see real quick if I made a mistake or whatnot. So draw those lines on there real quick and then we'll cut it out. Got really nice cut edges on that. Obviously where it goes in and out, it leaves a little to be desired. But I mean, that is a heck of a nice cut. Mm. Now I'm going to take it over to the grinder and belt sander and stuff and knock off all the sharp edges and then we'll slap it in the mill. I think I am centered on my workpiece there. I uh, used a center drill to drag on the lines a little bit and make sure that they, uh, well, make sure I scribed on the lines with the center drill and then double checked it with my DRO and they both line up. Since I have to use a half inch collet, I'm going to go ahead and use a half inch pilot drill. Um, this drill bit pretty much doesn't need a pilot drill, uh, but, oh well, I'm going to anyway. Out of oil, hang on. I have my oil can refill. Woohoo, let's get going. See if that's too fast. Yeah, we're gonna go slow. nice. I'm going to put in my inch and a quarter diameter end mill holder. And then I'm going to put in my inch and a quarter tap. And this is a end mill to tap adapter that I built. I have a video on that. Because taps don't have a nominal size shank on them, this one happens to be just over an inch, so you can't put that in a one inch collet or a one inch holder. 
unless you take the time to machine down the tap, which I guess is a possibility, but if I buy another tap, then I have to machine it down, whereas if I make this holder, then the next tap I buy should fit, right? Whee! Oral everywhere. And we'll tap. There, that felt easier. No. There we go. I like to add a little more oil when I come back out of there. And it's just that easy. Another clumsy task done in no time. We're now at the point of the show where I'm going to take this big chunk of three quarter inch plate here, four foot by eight foot, three quarter inch thick plate. I'm going to raise it up, put it up on the plasma table because we're going to cut out some parts. I'm going to cut out probably a few of these base plates for this pipe squisher while I'm here instead of just doing, you know, one. so much side pull on my overhead hoist here. Alright, first thing I'm going to do is scribe where all the uh, Holes are supposed to go that I drill on the mill. actually write down the time of what that took me to swap them plates around but according to when the cut finished 
cutting on the last press plate I made uh, that was exactly 30 minutes ago. So I imagine I monkeyed around for a couple minutes getting that press plate thing I cut out off the table. Um, but easily took me 25 minutes then to swap all these plates around and get loaded up on the table. And everything went good. <sighs> so it's one of the things that people never get to see is how much time I spend loading plates and taking plates off of the table. It is a lot of time. It adds up in a huge hurry. Okay, it's time to start drilling the holes in this plate. Uh, I'm going to start off with the inch and a half hole here in the middle. Um, I like to start in the middle on these. That way, if I ever lose my DRO readings for some weird reason, I can put this inch and a half bit back in it and get it back in the center of the plate, you know, and then figure out where everything is from that. side plates now and uh, I don't know what I'll say about that okay bead laid in there really nice um, I'll probably lay a little something here on the inside too just because you know probably should shorter welds inside there that'll be good enough I don't want to get in the way of these mounting spots there can't have stuff you know can't have weld close to these bolt holes and stuff and this is more than stout enough out here so anyway you get the picture i'll get that finished up So these are the spacers that go between the cylinder and the plate, whatever thingy that I just made. I used to use inch and a quarter square shaft, but I had to always machine the ends of them. So I decided, you know what, let's just go inch and a quarter round. And there's ways to put a bolt in and lock that nut and hold on to this piece with that locked in bolt to put them on the rods. Um, I was going to make myself a set of soft jaws to hold these correctly. Uh, I'm up against a time crunch right now with getting this press shipped out. This press needs to ship tomorrow. And uh, yeah, I don't want to spend the time making soft jaws. So hopefully I can just drill these out by holding them here in the vise like this. 
and it won't be a complete disaster. Hopefully. So to hedge my bets just a little bit, I'm going to start with a tiny 5 16 drill bit as a pilot hole and then use our appropriate sized uh, bigger bit. And then we'll run the tap through it. enough. Now so those will screw onto the threads here and give me a nice fit. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's okay to just use round rod because if I need to hold on to this for some reason I can put a bolt in here, put a nut on there, you know, hold that which will jam against this round piece and then I can tighten up this end over here but I discovered that this stuff actually seems to grip see I don't know if you can tell it there it like it almost seems unnecessary to ever hold it with a wrench but but if you ever find yourself needing to hold on to these put a bolt and a nut there you'll be good to go okay I think I've got everything built now I've got my spacers got my return nut got the mounting plate Got the two flat dies. Um, so yeah, that's the entire project. Oh, the one thing I don't have is these bushings on here. Anyway, everything's done. Now it's time to start powder coating stuff, but I just realized I can actually put this uh, plate on the rods and make sure the dies work, because I don't know if these holes are actually the right distance apart. So, sitting here like this, it should be stress-free. The die moves up and down, no problem. This should just slide on there. Oh, it does, it does. It turned up, there we go, okay. It was out of square, and hopefully this top die moves. Oh yeah, beautiful. That is perfection. Let's uh, get everything clean and start powder coating all this. We'll get this thing cleaned up. And figure out how to get a powder coat on. I think I'm gonna hot flock these because I like hot flocking. I really like hot flocking because it allows me to see how thick the powder is going on as I do it. Uh, and also in these corners, you get a lot better coverage than just trying to do a static uh, cold flocking. So I'm a huge fan of hot flocking. So I think is what I'm going to do is actually hang this in the oven for just a couple minutes. Try to get it warm. 
and then we'll bring it over here and powder coat it. It's been sitting in here for several minutes. 92 basically. Ah, this is going to take a while to get warm. I think we're up to temperature according to the gun. Let's see if I get that piece pulled out of there. I'm just going to leave the camera pointing over here because I don't want to deal with the camera. I'm trying to get that piece out of the oven, turn it around, and then start powder coating. <sighs> so uh, if I drop it, it will be off camera. That's the downside of that. All right, here we go. Wish me luck. side this wire isn't strong enough to hold it all by itself so it's straightened out uh, good times all right are you super dirty now after all that yep bunch of stuff over here Quit wobbling around everywhere dang it Turn on the sucky suck. piece of metal has been in the oven way longer than I thought it would be. Um, I thought hot flocking it would save on my bake time, but it still took forever to get all the way up to temp. Uh, so I'm going to pull it out of there and hang it up on this cable here and let it cool off. Hopefully I don't drop it. Clean something. Ah, God. Ah, that's hot. Hot, 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 hot. Very I hope that looks good. I think all in all it's pretty good. I'll look it over better when it's cooled off and I can actually handle it. <sighs> well, anyway, um, that's powder coating. And there you go. That's your pipe squisher. Can I actually demonstrate this thing a little bit here? So we open it up. Put your pipe in there. I think you get the idea how the thing works, right? Running on air is a little bit dangerous here, so uh, I'm going to smash my finger in there. If you want one of these, we'll probably have them located on our website. And check the description down below for links and whatnot and information on how to order one of these from me. So, there you go. Thanks for watching. Enjoy your squisher. May it save you from making lots and lots of saddle cuts that don't work correctly.